Okay, thank you very much for accessing the Unit 3 Support Guide for the evaluation section of your controlled assessment. Uh, estimated uh, application time approximately two to two and a half hours per page, focusing primarily on page nine and page ten. Before watching the video, we would recommend that you turn to page 64 in the specification that you will find on the CCEA Technology and Design website. Here you will find on page 64 the assessment criteria that sets out how candidates can access marks from limited, satisfactory, good and excellent mark bands. We are aiming that all candidates that are completing this work have the ability and opportunity to access a top mark band which details we need to produce a detailed evaluation of the prototype that demonstrates an excellent level of reflective thought including fitness for purpose, testing against the specification and making evaluative comments and suggesting valid modifications using sketches where appropriate. Okay, presented in front of us is a client submission from the year 2019 uh, and this is their take on the evaluation section page 9. First of all, as you can see, is a well presented page with clarity of thought and good presentation of information. The first thing we would suggest that you bring in is your key factors from the specification on page two of your controlled assessment. This title is incorrect. Based off of guidance material, it should say reflection or evaluation of specification aims. Here, this column is superfluous and not required as this will be better supported through photographic material and tested with photos. Um, within the specification aims, your comments should be succinct with clarity of thought and addressing each of the bullet points from your specification. One way in which we encourage candidates to access good marks in this section is to take photographs of their final product. As you can see here, the candidate here has accessed this by taking pictures of him actually testing his product against what he had in the measurable criteria of his specification. Using a measuring tape, using scales, they can easily access materials such as what was the final weight of the product? How big was their product? These types of criteria, this type of criteria is really useful because it shows that the candidate is actually measuring against the criteria to determine accurately whether it has or it has not met the specification criteria. At this stage, we would like to draw your attention to the product evaluation on page 10. These are the things that we will be reflecting on through the process of the manufacture that has been achieved and also then what improvements you would do if you were to make this product again. In this section, you can see clearly the candidate here has identified different areas that they have changed from their SOLIDWORKS drawing located on page 8. There are details included in the vinyls and there is different chipping accessibility here as well. One good piece of practice here we can see is the candidate has actually tested the product in location. This gives us the insight as uh, the teachers who are marking the work to see how actually appropriate it fits into the environment that it's been designed for. An enhancement of this criteria would be in this section here. The client should photograph the significant difference from their page 8 SOLIDWORKS drawing to their final product. They should then articulate through deductive reasoning the reason why it was suitable for them to make this change as opposed to just for the sake of it. We would like that this was structured and succinct and relative to the photograph. If it's not possible to have a photograph to represent this, we would suggest a sketch of what has occurred internally within the product. The next part of this page, which we would be recommended in the format, would be to suggest further improvements. In line with the assessment criteria, which says, suggesting valid modifications using sketches where appropriate, you can see this candidate has opted to use both CAD and sketches at the bottom of their page. These are appropriate. You can see here how the CAD has suggested an improved format and given reasoning why but also using little drawings for more complex parts. It's not necessary to use CAD or to use sketching. It can be either or, it doesn't have to be a combination of both. But you can see that some parts of it here are easier to show in CAD 
whilst other more intricate areas that they might struggle to draw on CAD can be drawn with simple 2D sketches. The key aim here is to show how they have thought their product through and how they've identified things that were wrong or flawed with their original design that if they were making the product again, they would make these improvements. A further enhancement of the sketches would be to present these in a 3D drawing technique to again try and gain more marks and more traction, but to also include measurements. The measurements that actually existed from the test and how they could further improve and again enhance to relate back to the specification originally. These sketches would be devoid of that at present. Okay. Uh, presented here is a suggested format to allow candidates the ability to access the excellent mark band, depending of course on how they complete this particular section. I would like to focus your attention here to the evaluation against specification. First point, you should create a table in PowerPoint inserting two columns and then the sufficient amount of rows based against your factors. Your key factors can be copied from page two and in here, each bullet point should then reflect the bullet points from page two once again. And you're simply documenting whether you're either successful or unsuccessful in meeting that aim. This can be done through uh, quantifiable data, through numerical numbers, so you can say whether you met this or didn't meet it. You could also then reflect on the costing sheet um, that you could include later on as an appendix. In the second part of page nine, we suggest that the candidate uses measurable criteria as often as possible through the use of photographs. We suggest testing against measurable criteria, such as size, cost, time, weight, and target market. If the candidate can take pictures of testing the, this criteria, they can very aptly test weight and size and time through measurement also take pictures, for example, if it's designed for a child, of a child playing with the toy or playing with their product, showing how that meets that area of the specification. They should then support this through annotation of the photograph, combined with written text explaining the outcome and how they found how that product had satisfied or struggled to meet this area of the specification. At this stage, we are now ready to progress on to page 10, which is looking at and reflecting on what has happened during the manufacturing process, and also if we were to try and make the practical again, or if it was to be made by a third party. In this section in particular, we're going to focus on the alterations made during manufacture. This can be to enhance the skill set. This can be because your design maybe had a couple of design flaws, and this is reasons for including this. Nobody would be presumed to be arrogant at this stage and say there was no alterations to be made because it was perfect, so be careful with your selection. You should have approximately three. Each of these is a documented photograph, which is a photograph of your final process, or a photograph of your final product zoomed in and cropped to suit. The annotation here is to then explain what you were trying to do, and with maybe a little supporting sketch to show what you were trying to do, and then what actually happened and why. This is the reflective part. One key area here where some candidates struggle is by inserting small photographs. It's really important that photographs included here are big so that anybody reading their material can see clearly what change has been made and that will be appropriately supported with what they've said in their annotation. In the second section here of this page 10, in our suggested format, are the improvements to be made the next time or if they were making the product again. This here can be done, as said previously, through CAD or through sketches. We suggest three sketches or three suggested improvements is appropriate to meet the criteria and assessment criteria on page 64, but also to allow them to access the top mark band of nine to 10 marks. In the sketch, they should show clearly what changes they will make, and this should be supported here in text or also appropriately with little annotations that point out key features supporting why these changes have been suggested. It's very important that candidates do not suggest superficial things such as just putting a round corner or a small, small change. It needs to be something that shows that they're thinking in the more technical areas of their design, suggesting why that change could be made and how that would enhance it, and also giving reason to why they didn't suggest it or design this in the first place. 
At this stage, we would refer you to your course textbook and this will help support further theory. For example, if you have used a lap joint and you have discovered that maybe it was inaccurate or poorly attached, you could sketch a dial joint, which will provide you with better, stronger structures, uh, more contact surfaces, and also maybe a strengthening process for your product overall. This would be an example. If you find that you were struggling with this particular page, we have also said that you could include photographs of the finished product to show the excitement and enjoyment that you've actually undertaken through your study. You can show people using the product, maybe some of the features that you haven't uh, mentioned in the previous sections within your course also. At this stage, we would like to draw your attention to our support material located on Firefly. If you access the technology homepage and select GCSE Technology and Design, you'll see two sections. One, in support of theory once your coursework is complete, and two, your coursework section. On here, you will see the Unit 3 CCEA Questioning and CCB Advice to Pupils. You select the link, download a copy, and then click View. At this stage, you will see all support and guidance material for the corrections of pages 1 through 8. You should take your time to make sure you have covered all of this material before attempting and also including the completion of page 10. Each of these gives you helpful hints, again, through our suggested guidance on how to meet the mark scheme criteria.